Now, Jack has a integration discussion topic. Uh, today, we're going to do another overview of, of one of our services. Jack's actually going to touch on uh, Bitwarden, the password manager. So, uh, Jack, when you're ready, go ahead and take it away. Yeah, so before I kind of jump into it, I kind of wanted to mention the fact that we are going to do, we kind of changed our model up here for how we're going to, our how we're going to cover all of our services. Sure. Basically, we want to do an overview of every single service. And then we're going to pick one service, probably a major one, something uh, like Camboard or Nextcloud, and do a full dive into everything that product offers, everything we can do with it. And then just go service by service, probably about eight to 10 podcasts per service, and then jump to the next one. And then when we're done with that one, we'll jump to the next one, so on and so forth. By my count, if we exclude Portal and Command Center, we have five more services to go through. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good over here. You already know that I can talk about boards for days. So days. Yeah. I'll cover I'll cover Cam board as soon as possible. But I think I think probably we'll jump into Nextcloud. It's just the most versatile offering that we have. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna hop into Bitwarden here. Bitwarden will help you generate, save, manage passwords safely and securely. Okay. Think of it like a book of passwords locked by a key that only you know. Make sure, I'm telling you right now, make sure that key is a good password. Make sure your password for this is a good password. The last thing you need is one, two, three, four, five, six. So there there are so many different uh, approaches to creating a strong, secure password. Do you have any sure. favorites or? Uh, I'll tell you what, I've, I know a lot of people that do the phrase mm. it's like taking um dark side of the moon and lyrics from one of the songs and you know you change up a yep. handful of words here and there and you end up with this 25 character you know password with that's no one's no, probably no one's gonna guess but uh right now for me at least i usually go 16 i think my passwords are like 16 characters and they are just so I'll use two or three words, and then I'll add in um, my special characters and my alphanumerics when gotcha. I kind of feel. Yeah, I, I'm I'm in the same boat. I think phrases are are probably my favorite way to go. They're they're the easiest to remember, at least, especially if they mean something to you. Uh, now, I know Bitwarden does have a way to generate past phrases uh, if you need a suggestion, if you you know need something to to kickstart. And, you know, obviously, if, if you don't think about it, it's going to be harder to remember. Now, on the other side, the average person's vocabulary comes out to something like 20,000 words, right? Which isn't bad at all. But password managers have dictionaries with 10 times that or more. Right, right. right. So the, the pool of entropy that you have to draw from when you're using a... a generator like that is going to be a lot larger than something you you make up off the top of your head uh, another approach that i've seen done i am not going to comment on the security of this but using the patterns on a keyboard to actually change your password oh that does not sound secure at all it's going to be fairly random as far as the actual letters go if you if i i knew someone who literally took uh, from the Z key and then like up to the one key and then the X key up to the two key and just did that for their entire left hand. And that was their password. Okay. Fair enough. My one comment on that would be if you look at this Wikipedia page generated, I got 2019 here. It's one Q two W three E four R. And if you look at your keyboard, Yep. That's the first four right there. Granted, yep. you can make it way more. You can go complex, but uh, are you going to remember it? What I see in in this, uh, what is this? A splash data. They also got keeper. So they, they've they've got a couple sources here, but these are all either f like three word phrases, and the words are like three letters or less, or or they're like one word, right? Which is the literal interpretation of, of password. It, it's like the old, you know, knock on the sentry's door, and, you know, they open the, the porthole, and they say, well, you know, what's the password? And you're like, <laughs> blueberry. And, and, you know, it, it lets you... Let you that's, in, yeah, sure. <laughs> that's not what this is for. And, and, I, and I, think, I think passphrases 
should be obviously more more generally accepted and and as long as we start using that terminology i think it's going to be a little bit easier to communicate what we actually mean right this is this is your past phrase right use numbers use letters use symbols use use spaces even right sure the one comment i'd make on passphrases is they're great so this is where a password manager would come in mm. it's are you really going to be able to remember all these passphrases? Yeah, how as you many? Go how right. many? I, right. w one thing I haven't seen a study on, and, and I'm sure it exists, is you know how many passphrases can you have in rotation at once? Can I have five? Uh, can I remember thirty? Like, and and that's uh, secure passphrases. That isn't you know let me in or admin or you know how, how many how many of these can I actually remember feasibly for a period of time? before either the complexity of the passwords uh, start to break down or or I start forgetting them, like I, on average. So uh, I, I haven't seen that, but I would be interested in, in such a to study. To see how many you could remember, how many people could remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would guess it's in the range of 20, just thinking off the top of a, a complete guess right there. But I, I would yeah. say, you know, 20 passphrases would be like right around the number where uh, do I remember this? Do I not? Oh, this looks like it's for a different login. Um, in my experience, now I'm not going to say on average, but in my experience, people are already offloading their passwords, right? You, you have browsers that have built-in password managers already, right. Right? right? And now they're not as fully functioning as, as Bitmore. They don't have generation. They don't have revision right. history, right? But th you're, if you're already offloading your passwords to something... Right in, in this case, your browser. Uh, s take a second to actually think about: Is this working for me, and can I do it better? Right, and, and yeah. I think here we have a better solution. That uh, it's not an extension. That browser, that embedded password manager, if you want to call it that, it's great. But you're you're stuck. You're in one browser. Yeah. And I know, I for me, I have a handful of devices that I need access to. I have my laptop. I have. A laptop a desktop and a phone and i want to be able to access these passwords everywhere so uh bitwarden kind of helps out with this yeah kind of jumping ahead so right now so with bitwarden you have an application for every environment you're on i mean anywhere you have internet access you're gonna get but you're gonna get bitwarden and you're, you're gonna get it in a native way and so, actually even when you don't but i'll, I'll dive into that in a second here Sure, yeah. So the application range we have, so we have a, a web application for it. So you can go to your instance and sign into it. And you have, you know, a website, a web app that you can sign into and it's there. You have the browser extension that you can link to your web app. So anytime you hit a site, you can just hit your browser extension. Your browser extension is this nice autocomplete form and it has a way to manage the username and password. You have a desktop client. I actually am not too familiar with that one. I usually just go web app and browser extension. There's mobile apps, iOS, Android, they're out there. And then the one I also haven't touched or messed with at all is the command line interface. I have used a desktop client before and I actually saved my butt once. Um, in, really? In the sense that, yeah, in the sense that I had actually gone in and deleted a password out of my password manager, right? And once you delete it, it's, it's gone. How... How awesome it is it that it's that secure, you know? But, but, <laughs> but you know, and, and, and in this case, I did actually need to, to recover it. And I had forgot that I had installed this desktop client. I hadn't spun it up in forever. Uh, but what Bitwarden actually does, it syncs a copy to all of its clients. And you're able to log into the client offline. You don't actually need a persistent connection to the internet. Okay. This, this yeah. does work in an offline manner. So what I did is I turned off my internet on my desktop, pulled open the, the password manager and unlocked it with my you know master passphrase and was able to recover that password that was in the client that still had not synced okay. to the most recent change. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I was, I was really happy about that. I will kind of step, take a step back here. I, for the longest time, I had a desktop only password manager. I had KeePass XC. I'll toss it out there. Uh, great service, but the one problem I had was I couldn't sync it across devices. Now, you could do the same thing, one would argue, that we did with GNU Cache, where you put it in a shared directory. Absolutely. I absolutely yeah. could. Uh, the yeah. one note I would make is no mobile, and I feel like it's usually mm. it 
for me at least it's usually but syncing between syncing passwords between my uh laptop here and my phone i'll actually throw this out there now i'm not sure how well it works in mobile but Nextcloud actually has an application that can unlock KeePass files that oh, how it about that? stores. How about yeah. that? Yeah. So you open. Glad you tossed that one out there. Yeah. 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 Log, you can you mean? can log into your Nextcloud instance uh, with your, you know, with the, your your just regular web app and go to the the KeePass application and, and open your KeePass files with that okay. application on That's your sweet. Nextcloud web app. Yeah. That is sweet. So. If, if you really want to cheap out and just use Nextcloud, and this is why I said we're probably going to cover it first because it does a lot of stuff. It does everything. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It does it's practically everything. everything. It it may do stuff in a hacky manner, but yeah. it, can, it can do everything. Some of the major features with Bitwarden are... Why we, you, why you would choose this over a synced key pass to Nextcloud <laughs> instance would be... So fine. You're able to securely store passwords with both. Uh, this one gives you the ability to secure, s- securely generate passwords. That's another just default yeah. password manager feature, obviously. This, I notice you're able to securely share passwords within organizations, which is a great feature, especially for us because we manage secrets and we do use that uh, organization feature that they have. Um, so we're able to share passwords between us, but he's not able to see my collect my personal collection and I'm not able to see his collection, but we do have a shared view of our organization collection. Especially for us, we have a lot of admin accounts, I would call them. They're not owned by Andrew and they're not owned by myself, but they are accounts that we do use for you know, a bot that we have. And maybe he needs access to it and maybe I need access to it. Mm-hmm. So what we're able to do is use the organization account and he's able to see that bot username and password and then i'm able to see that bot username and password uh also with api keys i know it's not the greatest implementation but sometimes some of these services only offer you know a single api key per user so we just set it up for a bot user and we're able to use that uh shared account as a way to you for us to both use that service along with organizations we kind of already touched on it but you do get the cross platform accessibility which is huge uh with keypass xe you can do that next cloud sync i mean there's a reason i (laughs) there's a reason i didn't (laughs) yeah and then the last feature i'll kind of touch on is the have i been pwned uh password check so you can compare your passwords to the have I been pwned database to check whether your password has been leaked or if any of your passwords are have been a part of a leak, which is great. But honestly, if you're not generating passwords, I think you're a little bit crazy. I'm, I'm a huge proponent of when you sign up, just generate a password, open the Chrome, you know, the extension, generate a password for the service and save it immediately. Rotating, don't get me wrong, I am not great on rotating passwords. Uh, I rotate them if I have to or if I forget, but typically unless I see some kind of note, they they stay the same and they're all secure and they're all different. So I kind of feel safe there. Now maybe, you know, reach out and let me know if I'm doing it wrong or if you're able to sign into my accounts because something was leaked and I am unaware. But for the most part, I absolutely think generating a password on the fly is the way to go when you're creating any kind of account. Yeah, and, and talking about rotating passwords as well, too, there's there's definitely the uh, rationale to do that, you know, in the event of a data breach. But in June of 2017, NIST, which is the National Institutes of Standards and Technology, I think. Yep, that's correct. Uh, they revised their password security recommendations, right? and they... They were they were going through and reevaluating their standards and, and best practices. So the new NIST password framework recommends, uh, among other things, removing periodic password change requirements. So they've recognized the same thing that we've known for a while. We the tech 
community is that there are way better alternatives than rotating passwords. Yeah. Right. And especially, absolutely. you know, talking about really realistically, how many secure passwords can you hold in your hand at one given time? Great. Right. That's awesome. How many services have you signed up for? So I have the number on that of the average number of services people are signed up for. And I wanted to drop it. And I think this is a perfect place for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you got? Average user signs up. You have accounts with 191 is what mm-hmm. the average was. Definitely wanted to toss that out there. A hundred. Think about that. 191 different passwords. Well, not even different passwords though. Different accounts. They're probably reusing passwords. Let's be oh, honest. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Now, obviously, using a password that's going to be different. Not only am I only am I not going to have to remember 191 anything's right. Is that they're going to be unique because when I sign up for them, I'm just going to generate something generate. random yeah. in my password manager. Yeah, with that, passwords are obviously stolen all the time. Phishing attacks, you know, database leaks. You know, maybe someone isn't securing their, how they're storing their data uh, or their passwords. So, you know, it's exposed. So with that, with Bitwarden, kind of a dumb little point here, but you can save time. Why? You don't have to rotate 191 passwords. You don't have to spend your Saturday rotating every single one of your passwords or having them send a reset link. I don't know, man. If it's between that and mowing the lawn, I don't know. I might... <laughs> Pick that one. <laughs> yeah, kind of to conclude here, Bitwarden's out there. It's a great service. I I mean, we talk about how we use Canboard all the time and NextCloud, but really Bitwarden, I would say I, I use Bitwarden every day for sure. I can guarantee I'm pulling up a, a uh, login information from Bitwarden versus, you know, signing into our Kanban instance. The kind of last thing I'll touch on is that digital inheritance. You know, if something were to happen, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I don't have anything drafted up right now, but, uh, you know, as I get older, I probably will. But, you know, putting a password in to, for all these services rather than, you know, just falling off the grid. So my parents, my parents have a little black book. Actually, it's a big black three ring binder but 191 accounts you think more or less. their 191 <laughs> accounts are all written down in there and i've asked them you know what happens when the house goes up in flames right, right. is, is that going to be the first thing you save right i i don't think so right, right? i i i hope <laughs> because otherwise <laughs> that's going to be very difficult you know but you know, their their logins to their their bank accounts their their logins to literally their their email addresses i mean i doubt that my stepdad has logged into his email address and or his his email service in in years right just because you you don't do that once you have it saved on all your devices i'm not constantly logging into my email but i use it for everything right it's and we can talk about this in a later episode but it is definitely a central point of a failure or otherwise, but it's definitely a central point. And I, I couldn't get there. Well, if, if something like that happened, they wouldn't have their password available to them for that. Right. That would be devastating. Well, how do you recover when you can't access email? So, so what does that look like? You have to walk up to a company with your, I, I mean, a <laughs> bank would be a little different cause they have your identification, but what do you say to like, you know, some of these email providers, Oh, I'm actually the person, you know, this is actually my account. You can't just call support and say that, you no. know, no. So hopefully you have recovery options set up. You just don't have any options. That's all I have. I have a couple links down there. Check out Bitwarden and please, 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 please do not, like, do not use the same password for everything. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it. That's-